The Lloydminster Youth Council held a small town version of the amazing race last night with the Border Dash. Teens competed in a variety of obstacles and celebrated the progress made by the council in less than two years. Josh Ryan with more. An evening of running, problem solving and chucking water balloons wrapped up the first full year of operations for Lloydminster's Youth Council. A period where the group's functionality has surpassed expectations. To see um, the confidence that's growing in them, their skills and the abilities that they have and the vision that they've been able to create and engage um, all of the youth on the council to be part of and then, and then to broaden that engagement to uh, community youth has been uh, more than what we had actually hoped for. Marin says one of the biggest surprises has been how much the council has been able to do on their own. We help them brainstorm a little bit, but they do all the connecting, the coordinating in the community, reaching out to community partners and, so, and uh, looking for support for their events. A big thing that we like to do is um, for youth from the youth. So uh, I think that's what's been surprising is we've been able to pull off some pretty amazing events um, all from us. Some of those events include a massive pool party at the Aquatic Center and the Valentine's Royal Dance. For this final event, though, it was a team effort to have one last hurrah outdoors. We all kind of brainstormed what we thought would be fun and went from there. Key to this year's success has been the community partnerships the council has fostered. Some good uh, relationships have been developed with City Hall and then with our school boards and, and partners and organizations in the community who really have seen um, what the youth potential is in our community and want to be part of investing in that. Boyer is moving on from her current role, but she's confident that returning and incoming members will continue to help the Youth Council grow. I'm excited for the opportunity for some of the, our other members to be able to shine. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. Preparations for colonial days in the border city are ramping up with organizers releasing details on the entertainment fairgoers will see. A number of big stars will be hitting the stage including Alyssa Reed, Prism, Helix, Cold Creek County and Charlie Major. Very excited about our lineup. It meets all genres. It's an exciting time for everybody. Great shows and they're free when you come through the gate as well as the usual monster truck and demolition derbies. Canadian Bulls will be put in the spotlight in a ring while a freestyle motorbike show adds some flair in the background. Total extreme day. Those who like the bull riding for the excitement, those who like the, like the uh, motorbike for the excitement, can all come together and get a great combo show. Now the gates open to Colonial Days July 12th. For more information, visit the Lloydminster Exhibition website. Well, the annual Lee Park Rodeo is on this weekend and the Lloydminster Cultural and Science Center is reopening the historic Rendell House. Heather Clagus has the details in this week's What's Happening. This weekend is the 63rd annual Lee Park Rodeo. Rodeo action already underway, but you've still got lots of opportunity to check out the rodeo tomorrow and Sunday afternoon. Things are going to get underway at 1 o'clock and tomorrow a big day at the rodeo. They started off at the pancake breakfast and then tomorrow night they've got the annual rodeo dance. It's going to be a lot of fun if you head just north of Mar Wayne for the Lee Park Rodeo. They're just putting the finishing touches on Rendell House behind us here at the Lloydminster Cultural and Science Centre. It was the first wood frame house built in the city of Lloydminster back in 1903 and they've been working on restoring it and they're ready to show it off to you coming up tomorrow. You've got a chance to take a guided tour of it. Plus there's going to be a number of other events going on at the museum too. There's going to be bouncy houses, old fashioned games for the kids. Should be a fun way to spend some time with the family. We want you to start your weekend by winning. This time we've got a brand new copy of Mary J. Blige's latest album, Strength of a Woman. It includes the title track. It also includes a collaboration with Kanye West. If you want a copy, it's really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And coming up on Thursday afternoon, you can head to the Legacy Centre where they're celebrating Canada's birthday through song and then a 150th birthday tea. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. 
Both U16 liner squads took to Legion Park last night for a doubleheader in Ladies League action. And in almost exactly the same fashion, it was one inning proving to be the difference in both games. Lance Phillips has more. Both U16 teams were up against tough opposition in Thursday night Ladies League, something that's not new. On the B side, the Lloydminster Edge held the liners without a hit until the third inning. But the real problem started early, with the Edge putting seven runs on the board in the first inning en route to a 15-0 win in five. I just think they have a very great skill set. They have a lot more experience than we do, but I think it's just a great opportunity to play against them for experience. It's a great team for us to play. We learn a lot playing them. Uh, even though it's not as fun on the scoreboard, yeah. it's a great game for us. DeCock struggled on the mound, but her resilient nature is something she takes a lot of pride in. I feel like I just thrive under pressure. I like to just try my hardest, even when it's tough, it motivates me. It's one of the things we work on starting early in the years, tough mental game, uh, being able to work yourself out of a problem. In the late game, the U16 A-liners met a similar fate as their B-side counterparts, losing 12-3 to the senior liners. But instead of the first, the game unraveled in the third, with the senior squad scoring seven. The U16 girls have struggled in Girls Prairie League softball this season, and the senior liners' strong play is all too familiar. Yeah, they're, uh, they're an aggressive team, just like those other teams that we get come up against in GPLS, uh, for sure. Uh, so they're very comparable. Which begs the question, what do the U16s need to do in order to find success against teams they need to start beating? Um, just confidence and just that push that you want to do good for your, not only yourself but your team too. Uh, they got to focus on the fundamentals, the, the errors are what's killing us. And, uh, and uh, they know that, they just got to figure out that resilience to get through that. So once they figure that piece out, it'll be fine. Lance Phillips, Newcap Sports, Lloyd Minster. The AAA Bantam Bobcats hosted a spring camp this week, providing an opportunity for young players to show what they've got ahead of the upcoming season. Although the coaching staff has been scouting at lower levels, it gives them a first look at many new players and only one day in, both coaches and returning players like what they see. You know, it shows their commitment to our team. It shows that they want to be a part of this organization and, um, you know, they're not afraid to come out and, and show what they have at this point in their hockey career. It's nice to see that they're finishing their checks being physical. Uh, that's one of the big things that we all look for, really. For the three returning players, showing leadership at these camps is paramount to the team's success on and off the ice. Uh, well, it's a pretty big deal because you want, obviously want to uh, set a standard for the younger players and really show what you can do so they know what to live up to. But for Johnson, the most enjoyable part of camp is watching players previously unsuccessful at cracking the roster return in top form. You know, just seeing kids grow. So we did this last year and there's kids that we cut, you know, and that we let go, you know, before our, our inner squad games or even, you know, after inner squad games, just seeing how much they've developed, you know, down the Bantam AA level and um, just seeing that, you know, kids can grow in, in the other leagues.